Jamie from Smelly Wood Design here, and in today's video, I'm going to be installing locating pins on the work BCNC. And this is in conjunction with the vacuum pods that I made last video. So stay tuned. So the materials I'm going to need for the install of these locating pins are um, tubing. This is a six millimeter tubing. I also need these quick connect um, fittings, couplers. I'm gonna need a um, air filter along with a regulator so I can get the right pressure I need. I need screws to mount the locating pins onto the baseboard of the CNC. Um, and then I have my compressor. So along with those things, I am gonna start by locating where I want the pins on the board, take off the spoil board, and I'm going to drill or cut, route the holes that are located in the pin, in the, um, in these locating pins. So what's gonna happen is I got the line, blue line, I gotta cut it to length, but I'll do that underneath. But we'll connect it, quick connects in with a T fitting, and then we'll do one there. We'll do the same thing, another quick, one of these here with another quick connect T, and then we'll connect them in line with each other. So all of them are on one air line connected to the um, valve and it's connected to the solenoid. This is a pneumatic valve solenoid where the airline comes in and then splits off and then when it's activated there's a little piston in here that opens and closes whichever one and then when it's open the line goes in the pin comes out when it shuts, it reverses the line and the, pushes, the air pushes the pin down. So this is what's gonna actually be connected to the black box, um, to the open, uh, open port. All right, so now I need to get um, this cleaned up, put the baseboard on and reconnect it back down. And then I can machine this hole pattern, four bolt holes and then an opening for, um, for the pin to come up. All right, don't do what I did. I used the wrong router bit. I used a down instead of an up cut and it was burning the material as it was cutting. Um, started smoking a little bit, so I had to uh, blow it off before it uh, did any damage, but it worked. Here is the coolant um, input. So I'm going to pop that out, connect the white or connect the wires and run it to where I'm going to have the, um, the switch or the valve. It's the moment of truth. I don't have the black box turned on. I can manually open and close the valves through this button. I've got it hooked up to the uh, valve over there. So I need to hook up the air and let's see what happens. All right, so I did get it to work. And I got these reversed. So let's pull them out, reverse them. All right, now, all right. Now let's connect the black box, turn it on. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if the those two commands will open it and close it. So 
to M8, cool it on. All right. And then M9, cool it off. Sweet. All right. Now I know it works. I'm going to um, turn it all off, get these mounted into the board, run the line, and then map the M9 and M8 to this so I can turn it, put these up and down. All right, so I got the line ran and I'm going to put this Pins up is one, pins down is um, zero. Here's the other feature that comes into play. We can use the um, locating pins with the pods, but we can also use the locating pins as clamps. Let me show you how. All right, so with the pods removed, I can now take a piece of material and butt it up next to the locating pins. But I can also take a piece of wood, drill a hole, bolt it to the pin, and then when it clamps down, when it retracts, it clamps. Now this has, I'm gonna set it to 100 PSI. We'll see if that's enough. Um, but I need to now um, drill some holes and make these so that they bolt in or screw in to the pins. I got four of them made. These are drilled out for five millimeter screws and let's go bolt them on and see how well this clamping feature works. All right, we got the piece of wood. Line it up on the pins so they're touching. And we're gonna go ahead and retract them. Oops. All right, they're down. Oh, wow. That is awesome. And that feature I didn't even think of when I thought of the locating pins. This is gonna be awesome. Um, pretty much. Sweet, a new way of clamping material onto the spoil board. Awesome. All right. All right, now that I know that these are gonna work, oh, this is awesome, I'm so excited about it. Um, this might be my new way of clamping uh, material to, to the CNC. Um, it's just holding really nice. So the next steps for me on this project is to uh, take these off, get the vacuum pots back on here, and make um, some cuts on CNC with the vacuum pods running. Um, the goal is to cut out cabinet sides, the upper cabinets for right here, and um, I'm gonna have to play with feeds and speeds and router bit sizes and see what the best combination is and how fast the machine will, uh, will cut. All right, here's my first real test of cutting a cabinet side on the pods with loaded-cating pins. I've done some test pieces and it's worked out pretty good, but this will be the first real test of drilling holes and cutting around the part as well as the dados um, and rabbits. Um, so let's get started and get this thing cut and we'll see how long it takes.
worked fantastic. Um, I did get my cabinet side done. I've got potatoes and rabbits. I've got pin shelf pin holes in here. Well, that works. That worked great. Um, but this worked fantastic. This was the right hand or left hand side. We'll do the right hand side next. All right. So I'm going to spare you the pain of cutting out the uh, other side of the cabinet. But you're going to have to go watch the uh, cutting of the bottom of the cabinet. So as you can see here, I've only got two of these. Uh, pin clamps holding this part down, and it held it great. Um, I had no problems with it. It didn't move one bit. All right, so these pneumatic pins work great as clamps. They held it down solid. It didn't even move. And there's my pan part. It took about nine minutes to cut out. I think I could probably do it a little quicker uh, with different speeds and speed feeds and speeds but uh, so far I am so happy and pleased with it and all right well that brings us to the end of this video the locating pins work great they also work great as a clamping feature um, something I didn't even think about but um, everything worked worked good so I wanted to go through and do some pros and cons of both the pods and the locating pins um, if you're just starting out and trying to figure things out, I would just stick to holding things down with screws and clamps. Um, that way you can get a feel for things. But if you're at that next level where you're looking at wanting to produce more and get more out of what you're doing on a little desktop or a little CNC like this, is maybe look at the pins and the vacuum pods. Um, they are great options if you're looking at more producing things quicker, um, with quicker changeover times instead of having to screw things down. So let's go over the pros of the vacuum pods. So the vacuum pods pros are quick changeovers. Once you get something set up, you can run the same thing over and over again. Let's take, for example, the cabinets that I'm gonna be building. Um, once I get it set up in the CAD software, CAM and the CAM software, it's saved forever. I can use that same one over and over again. So with the vacuum pods, I can just set it and just run rights and lefts all day long if I need to. So that's quick for production. Um, it could take time to get everything set up on the table saw to do the dados and rabbits. Then you gotta go through to do the shelf pins. So it's time consuming that way. It's a little more, more time consuming on the front end setting this up, but once you get it set up, it is gonna be running all day long. You don't have to do a lot of those changeovers and you can just run rights and left cabinet sides all day long, not a problem. So that's a big pro on this one. Um, so one of the cons, and this is up to my setup. This is a con on my side and that's the, the vacuum pump. Now the vacuum pump I got from a friend and it doesn't have a lot of sucking power when it comes to MDF and hardwoods. It just won't suck it down. I don't know if it's because the surface is not completely flat on those materials or if it's porous. Once I put the melamine and um, laminate material on, it sucked it right down and it wouldn't move. So I'm gonna have to look at maybe investing in a different vacuum pump if I wanna do MDFs and hardwoods. Let's move over to the locating pins slash clamps. Um, Pros, quick changeover at the end. Um, you can hit the button, the pot, pot pins come up, slide it in, hit the button again, and it clamps it down solid. I didn't have any movement on any of the things that I was testing or doing with the, pan, with the pins um, engaged and holding down the material. So that is a big pro for these quick changeovers. Again, if you're at that next level of trying to break into producing more stuff quicker. So, one of the cons, again, on my setup that I have here is I should have um, purchased taller rails for my CNC. Um, that way, instead of embedding the pins in the spoil board, I could have done it on the side with the adjustable T-nuts and I could have slid the pins back and forth, getting it in the location that I need um, so it would be adjustable all the way around. So that's a con on my side. Um, if I were to do any more upgrades on this machine, that's one I would do is 
get taller rails so that I could put the pins on the outside. Um, another thing that I would add to this is put another set of pins on the right hand side. Um, the reason I would do that is that I could have clamping power on three sides, making sure that it didn't move anywhere once I get a full sheet on here. Um, so overall, I am extremely happy with the pods and the uh, locating pins slash clamps. Um, it works great. I'm looking forward to do future projects with those two features. I hope this video helped you out and maybe you got your uh, wheels turning in your head thinking what applications you could use with those different options that I've shown you in this video. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification and I hope to see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.